Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. Got my journal and a book, and I have been working on myself, which I hope each and every one of you has the opportunity to do, to carve some time out of your daily routine, to make room for you and time with you. That's super important, especially if you are on a spiritual journey and if you are quite frankly just trying to be a human right now you need that and you deserve it so let's get started today with our weekly channeling video we're going to be channeling with louise hay from the afterlife she's actually formerly the founder of hay house publishing which opened up a whole new platform it was really cutting edge to work with self-help and personal development in the way in which she did she gave lots of people opportunities and authors um, a a tremendous gateway she provided to express and share new age concepts, healing modalities, and ideas that quite frankly hadn't been shared before or previously considered taboo. And now there's just a whole wealth of information on hayhouse.com and they even have an app and there's a radio, Hay House Radio and things, so you can check it out. I am a uh, going to chat with her specifically about the topics of, for me, I've been working with the energy of love, self-compassion, but also with grief related to healing and codependency. No big deal, just a normal Sunday for me. So we'll kind of see which topics she will focus on. Um, I know that we've talked with Louise Hay previously because she is a spiritual teacher. She really has kind of a Maya, Maya Angelou kind of vibe for me. And yet she's very much a healer also. So, and a trailblazing woman, I mean, come on. You know, of course, I'm gonna be gravitated toward that. So let's learn some things about ourselves as humans, right? And as souls. Come on in, Louise. Yes, she's showing me self-acceptance is the big word. Like she's bringing like a note card that says self-acceptance. Okay, let's talk about self-acceptance. <laughs> I didn't think that that was in my drop-down menu of topics to choose from, but hey, you're the teacher, so I will bow to your wisdom. <laughs> so self-acceptance, go ahead, and share with us. She says, thank you. And she shows me a beautiful yellow sunflower. And she invites us to kind of sit in the center of the sunflower like a mandala. Just a beautiful sacred, almost like the Buddhas um, and the Teras and the, the energies of the Hindu god goddess aspects are depicted upon a lotus flower, much like that, a sunflower, a big, bold yellow sunflower for solar plexus, your solar energy of your spirit. So your solar plexus is a chakra that holds your spirit. So she shows us that to sit upon that. And the sunflowers really remind me of summer and sun energy, and I love that. Sun can also be um, construed as a solar energy, which is more of a masculine energy, if we're going to translate that into vibration of masculine feminine energy. So masculine solar sun and the balance of that would be the moon energy okay so just kind of understanding that which i'm having so much trouble with right now like intellectually and structurally and frames of reference it's just like there's so much spiritually that's turning over and flipping over and really um, becoming so interwoven that there's like a third kind of a birthing of a new paradigm that I feel is coming here, is presencing at least, and just new ways of seeing, sensing, knowing, doing, learning, including in the spiritual community and the spiritual realms. So the different layers of consciousness and in addition to our human minds. So a lot going on. Restructuring. So this beautiful sunflower, we can sit upon it. So have a seat. self-acceptance and then I feel like encouragement she usually has some energy of encouragement through the understanding that she shares so go ahead and feel free to talk about the cocaine 
So there's a lot of red energy also honoring the root chakra where your roots lie. There's a sense, she says, that you must honor the family and bring forward, carry forward traditions that might not be, and in most cases are not a fit for you. They are not authentically yours. They weren't yours to start with. And there sometimes is this sense of responsibility, duty, to bring forward these traditions, to carry them on, even though matriarchs of your family or patriarchs have crossed over and transitioned. There's a reason why there's a death and a birth process and cycle of life, a passing of the torch, in which the new generations, you, she says, you, come into a new embrace of self-acceptance while honoring the memory of what you know as pure truth for you at the time in which you choose to walk this path. So the planet, the stage of life that you're in very much has everything to do with what you are experiencing now as far as what has been passed on to you and what serves you now will not be everything that has been given to you, although gifted. Think of this in terms of when someone downsizes, the empty nester, so to speak, downsizes the home. And you go through a process of letting go of old items and things that host memories. And items, as we know, can hold energy, which is a very psychic way that humans have been connected to energy for aeons. And now, through the self-acceptance, you are learning some discernment about what is in alignment for you as you walk the path that you've chosen in a human form now, in your body and embodiment. These old things will not fit in to your life now, your lifestyle, your choice of living, your choice of being. This is not a disgrace or a dishonoring of the past, this is an honoring of you as the present, the one who carries forward and births new gifts into the realities of family, of structure, of exponential love and the power and capacity that you have of self-acceptance of the truth of where you are at today here now. It's not about choosing you over family or you over ancestral knowledge or wisdom, but of in fact knowing at the core roots of you, your red, rich root chakra, that the blood of your ancestors runs through your physical veins. And that alone is the honoring. It's not as simple as a recipe at the holidays or of grandma's quilt gifted to the newborn baby. It is far deeper far more transcendent than any of these token things. While beautiful and honoring, it is not the essence of the point of self-acceptance, is born through the understanding and courage of generations that have come previously to shed the old values and belief systems that do not fit anymore. The eras of the 1950s are gone. This is not the 1800s or the 1700s or the 1930s or the 1990s. This, that time that you're living in, you are rooted and supported through the blood of your ancestors without having to unfurl through choosing or choosing for or against their value systems or beliefs, you just honor the fact that that was theirs at the time. And that is enough. That is more than enough. You don't need extra to challenge your idea of self-acceptance when the lineage is one of having the courage to shed old things that don't fit, even the things you've learned in this lifetime as a child, in manners, in not talking to strangers, in, in choosing the right college for you or the right pattern of carpet in 
your front room or the right house style that is appropriate for you. For some, it'll be an urban loft. For others, it'll be a farm. And for others, many things in between. And you will move from one to another and to another into a different form and style of home. And so too, your life gets over and over and over again, put into a place of evolution and change in this creative process is essential to your human nature and to the being of your soul as a free and sovereign energy, because this is what you crave. The expression through experience, through the evolution, and in, yes, it is challenging. And self-acceptance is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the message. This is the lesson. This is the answer. Self-acceptance is the answer to self-love, to compassion, to understanding and kindness. Self-acceptance. Accepting what is without the excess pressure of other eyes upon you from the past and judgment as to the disappointment of the father or the unhappy friend who you couldn't give a ride to the airport to, etc. In those experiences that you've had, it is not, they're, they're chinks in your armor that really truly do not matter. Because the point is, is that you are not the armor, the external and the exterior. You are the soul and the heart and the gut of you. And that is served from the lineage, from the ancestral energy of those who've come before you. And you are the legacy of self-acceptance. Can you do this? It takes courage. It takes a bit of bravery. It takes discernment. It takes the ability to have boundaries and to say no and to not feel so responsible for others' feelings and emotions. That is such a cowardly way to face the world, feeling responsible for everyone's emotions or feelings. Oh, look, you made him cry. Oh, look, you made her feel bad. Oh, can't you just show up at the family picnic because you know this is the last, this might be the last time you see your grandma. All of the guilt and the shame from the legacies that you have inherited, self-acceptance brings you into the power of the now and the present moment to break those cycles so you don't pass those on to your children, to your friends, to yourself, and the next generation of you, the next evolution of you. From this decade to the next decade, as the years go by, as your lifestyle changes, as you age, you will need different things and the, you are going to need different aspects of yourself, your skills, knowledge and wisdom that you will source inside you at your root core. Because the people around you will start to disappear. As you get older, they will die. They will leave the human plane. And you will be alone. At some points in your life, you will feel very alone. So you cannot put your need or, or value of acceptance or how well you're doing or what a good person you are or how, how you're doing this life, how well you're doing in this life based upon other people's reflections back to you. It is only the reflection that comes from yourself when you look at the water and the stillness of the water, the reflection of you back at you, that's where you truly are, that's where the truth is. That's where self-acceptance brings you into a state of healing, transcendence, and deep, pure connection. Only then can your relationships be more authentic and truthful. Only then can you really be yourself. Lots of yellow, you guys. <laughs> Lots of yellow energy, solar plexus. This is a lot of information. This is very deep. It's very deep. It deals with our human fears of, of being rejected or judged or letting other people down or hurting other people's feelings. We've been so geared toward, I think, not hurting people and making sure we care so much about other people's feelings that we choose and anticipate how other people are gonna to react or respond to us and that impacts our decisions for ourselves when really those people could even be strangers on the internet 
and we give so much credibility to them and power to their influence when really it's we're the ones that have to live with ourselves right we get to be in devotion to our loving center our core self our spirit our soul we cannot lose sight of that and i think we have which is why i wanted to talk to louise about compassion self-compassion love and why she brought in self-acceptance because apparently that's the key Mm -hmm. she's showing me the symbol of a lion which is one that i have been deeply profoundly connected to especially recently which is a very goddess energy a very divine feminine empowering energy self-power energy and also the understanding of support and recognizing the community aspect of us in our own in our own kind of deepening into our own experiences there's a lot of confusing conflicting messaging out there and there's a lot of questioning of our own value and we have to allow ourselves to let our own belief systems change grow and evolve because if we don't then we're focusing so hard on keeping the past alive that we're missing the present (laughs) which the present is the gift right which creates the bridge to the future which is hope and possibility and optimism and opportunity and more growth and expansion of love which is the goal for everybody really even though people articulate it differently it that's what it is love pure love she says well said that was well said bridget thank you she says do not forget to mention meditation time and quiet solitude or solace to learn to be by yourself at times so you can understand the messaging that's going on inside of you in your brain is extremely helpful it will help you to sort out what is really yours and what is just like programming from previous experience it really helps to spend time by yourself in quiet meditation does that And so too does journaling. Journaling can do that as well. But to try not to take too much ownership over what is discovered or what comes through, but to just be present for that, just be willing to let things come in and through and not be so afraid of of them that you keep them so far away that you just kind of are basically ignoring or avoiding them. Just let them, just be with them. Practice non-judging. We could all use some practice at that, she says. Let's take a nice breath in. Big exhale out. Lots of heartfelt energy. Do you feel that? There's a little bit of turquoise coming through, a little bit of throat chakra energy of what is true for you, what is true for you. What are you feeling about this topic of self-acceptance? How is this showing up for you right here, right now? This might be too deep self-helpy stuff. You might not be wanting this. Why don't you want this? Why aren't you curious? Is it because your empathic heart is so overloaded? Maybe you should take a look at how you are in service to so many other people and so many other things besides yourself. You can do both. You can be in service to others and be in loving and kind and supportive relationships with others, but you also must be able to be present to receive. And are you doing that? And how are you in service to yourself, to your spirit, to your heart? How are you doing that every single day for yourself? In what ways are you doing that? hard to answer that question then you need to take a look at yourself or not just continue the rat race have we learned nothing from the last two years of pandemic have we learned nothing from wars and turmoil economic environmental have we not learned anything haven't you I think you have I think you know there's more to life than what you are doing for other people and what other people have trained you to provide for them and what you have bought into as your identity 
that gives you value based upon what you're doing externally. When truly the value is intrinsic, you're born with it, it never goes away, you just forget and drop the opportunity to connect. So sit yourself, like Louise says, into meditation or into journaling. Give yourself the opportunity to let your mind fill with thoughts that are going to be challenging for you, that you are going to feel upset about at first. But recognize where is that information coming from? Where are those thoughts, those beliefs actually coming from? Do they fit you today or not? If no, set them aside. Put them in the goodwill donation box and see what else comes through. See what is waiting to fill in the space, the void. You will not be lonely. You will be building a relationship within yourself that is strong and empowering and inspiring through self-acceptance, which is the first step of self-love and compassion. And then you can express and show up more fully in your relationships when you do say yes to be in relationships with other people and to do things for and with other people, the quality of the time that you spend with them is gonna be so much more, it's gonna be so much more connected to the overarching goal of love. And that might sound cheesy and corny, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> so this is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here on Above Life channel on YouTube. I am a psychic medium. I'm known for my work as an intuitive life coach. I do private session work as well. You can see the links below if you're interested in working with me as a coach. If you want to find my other work, go ahead and check out my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel where I talk about all different kinds of things intuitive and help to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. Here this week, yeah, a little bit of a different channeling video. Something that I feel very much appreciative of. I hope you do too. Thanks so much for being here. Remember, the purpose always is to inspire your spirit, fill you with hope, and to encourage you to live your life. This is your life, and you get to live it. Just live it.